end of that. Just a map away from going home empty-handed. Smoke on the hinge, lets them climb up catwalk, but do they opt to do so? Class is still back in tunnels. VP could always fall back into one of these B plays eventually. Yakinda's even got a Molotov. So we'll see where that, that one's going to end up. Cat is free, though. VP have a lot of room. And Astralis might try and meet them in the middle here. They're already facing. They're already fighting. And so if VP do drop back into B, Astralis are going to be there. Yeah, one of the curious things as well is you don't have a... Oh, sorry, you do have a smoke on Santi. That's my bad. Where, whereabouts is old Santi right now? He is over here yeah, long. towards Long. So if he is going to try and like smoke a mid to B, which is what this was looking like, there it is. he's going to get that throwing in now from this position. And now the rest of the gang of Averters Pro, who are waiting patiently, try to get through these doors. Glaive has smoked it off. They've got to battle through these smokes. They will get out into the open and now try to wrap the B bomb site. Pressure is on for Magisk. And for Dupree, who occupy the B site right now, getting closer is Virtus Pro and just Magisk in the hot seat, dead after one. Yakindar's disrupting the rotations down here in middle as well. Any kills he can get, so valuable to VP, but nothing is found. And in turn, a three on three retake given a go by Astralis. Yeah, double flash and they go, no waiting around. The bomb is ticking and the kills are flying through. There's a trade from Jane. Now it's all on Buster for him with armor, um, with every hope in the world but does a USP tap him out? There's the ding, and Buster can't convert. Glaive covered, looking away, head hitbox hidden, and Zip provides the shot. Three kills from him, and a lovely little retake for Astralis. Yeah. A lot of it coming down to Yakinda in middle. If he gets a kill there, I don't think that's an Astralis round. Yeah, I mean, dude, you could you could see how much that meant to Zonic, bro. He's, he's pulling in a big celebration. He knows that in a round like that, in a three on four, a lot of times, if that was a rifle round, you were probably just saving, yeah. mate. But you get away with that kill in middle, it reinvigorates the squad. And I love the pace on that retake, right? So many teams might have elected to hang around a bit, see if you're given a kill. VP are not going to overface there. You've got to bring the fight to them. And Astralis wastes no time in doing that. I do like this buy though, VP, right? Bomb plant is enough temptation. And knowing you can get rifles in on a map like Dust 2, sure, the lack of util, definitely a gaping hole here. But you make up for it with firepower, AKs and Galils, and headshots getting hounded here for VP. Astralis, they've got a guy in middle, needs to watch out. He's already starting to lean A, and that's the right call. VP are trying to take long later. James scouting middle still. Zikinda owns Catwalk and VP. Is it going to be contact out long? There's only one guy on this angle, but he's got a very tight angle indeed. Zip won't be able to put up more than a kill here. And instead, it's the info, and he backs out. Got to watch out for Yakinda on Cat. He's trying to sandwich them in, but he's already been dealt with. And Zip gets out scot-free. This is a beautiful start for Astralis, and they know exactly what's coming their way. Yeah, the, the movement in this round, man, how they've dealt with this with this cat and, and long crunch is, is beautiful. You deal with the cat prong. Now you've opened up the chance to play retake. You can get these players on the cross. VP didn't have a lot of utility because of the force by here. And so they're having to brave this crossing with just one smoke down. They will get a cross. Kicker, the man to make it. Trying to secure a bit of a foothold in this A site. The other two players back at long. They're hoping the bomb can get planted for these long players. And they'll come in handy later in the round. Oh, Kicker no. taps it. That's the Molotov to deny the bomb plant with so little oh, time no. left. The fact that the bomb is now dropped out in the open is a big problem for Buster. He's providing kills. He's providing pressure. But he's got to get this bomb planted. What? And he's taking fights on the no. catwalk instead. The round falls apart for VP. That was winnable. He killed the, the player in the corner. That was it. He had a chance. If only he immediately got on that bomb plant. Maybe that's a VP round. Maybe they can just sit back at long, but he tries to hunt the kills. And you know Astralis are not going to give you the kills before the time expires, right? Even if one goes down, the other will be hidden. So, yeah, I, I, you know, maybe Buster's calculating in his head. Maybe the, the clock is different, but I don't know, man. That felt so winnable for VP. Nice try. And Astralis play it so well by taking Catwalk. They deal with Yakinder and they just never give those long players picks. Talking of picks, Jane has opened up into middle. It's one way to begin a round. Yeah, I mean, once again, it's Sanji dropping this weapon over and playing P250 armor in this round. Of course. But look, man, this is why you give James the scouts. He's opened up for you. 
And now with the rest of VP leaning towards this B site, waiting in the tunnels, the question really starts to become, will this just be a follow through into a B play? Yeah, it's about your only hope here. And while well, Bubsky's going to put that in ruin, you would imagine. He's got nades, got molly even, but guns out right now. There's the mid flank kicker with a chance. Oh, he had to hit that headshot though. Dupree swerves and does take that trade to four and four right now. VP just getting ready to commit. Jane would given a pick. That would be lovely. And even though he hits a scout shot, that gives time for the util to rein in on B. Keep VP out for now. And they're going to reset spawn. Maybe running B with four could have given them a, a chance at the round. But now going back elsewhere with Astralis not having rotated, it should be free. There's Zip to take down your kinder. And at this point, maybe back to the tunnels here for Virtus Pro. Yeah, you, you could tell that they'd read into that as an over-rotation towards B, right? Your Kindar is just knife out through the long doors. Uh, I think they're hoping that all the attention, all that utility going into the tunnels is telegraphing a bit of a B stack. Couldn't be further from the truth. And now with the bomb dropped on short, it is just the cleanup for Astralis. Yeah. That round never lets... Uh, uh, they never let that round get out of hand, rather, in spite of the opener found on the scout. And so they go 3-0 and up, finding the pistol, finding the conversions as well. Yeah, this is the scout shot that began the heart, or began the round, rather. James taking down Glaive. Very nice shot. If you can do more of that with the AWP, then we're in for a map here. 3-0 for Astralis, but again, leads mean nothing in a series like this. James... He has that orb, and he's going right down mid with it. For Astralis, it's a bonus round. If they can steal this away and arm themselves with AKs, they would be more than happy. Flashing themselves through long a VP, though. Four CTs here to fight them. They're already pushed up. Oh, Buster knows, and he hunts down Zipex in the corner. Lots of Molotovs, lots of grenades. Oh. And are about to get beaten to the punch. The hunt is in. Buster, ooh, lighting them up with a couple. And Dupree does get out alive, but Astralis are worse for wear. Down a man. VP aren't pretty either, but at least they're armed. Yeah, if you're going to save this, you need to get a player up into the oh, site quickly. Oh. And the emphasis is on quickly, boys. <laughs> Come on! Oh! Get on my head. And, oh, oh, my God, Dupree! Someone, just, just do it the yes. easy way. Finally, yes. finally, he gets up. Now, Ooh. it's not the end of the world, because luckily enough, VP do take a while to actually <laughs> get a move on. That's the key to this war machine conserving energy, right? It's all about traveling at the the optimum speed for fuel efficiency. And now they start to creep out long. Dupree doesn't really have a say in what's going on at the A-bomb site. Yakindar's even late lurking up through middle. Dupree, a lot of work to do with this Galil. They've crossed up the ramp. They're going to try and swing him together by the looks of things. Oh. And Kicker absolutely blows him out the water. Virtus Pro are on to their first round here and now. And a lot of it coming off the back of Buster, who just really is keen to capitalize on how much Astralis were fighting him at long. Yeah, they were throwing all these grenades. And, you know, as he clears Zip in, in that close blue corner, I thought Astralis would try and trade the kill or at least be aware that maybe they would get hunted this guy out. But no, yeah, he's able to get double entry, do a lot of damage. And then VP just slow it down on long, as so many teams do on this T side. They're just trying to save. At the last possible second, they're going to walk in and do everything they can to deny this gun. It's uh, it's not looking good for Majis, got to say. There's the molly and bye, bye. No smoke for it, no chance, no hope in hell. VP on the board and Astralis getting burnt to death. They've still got a bit of money. They should certainly buy up here. Get some guns, even have an AWP as well. It'll just be one player who's got problems. And let's just, why are we oh, I don't want, I don't want to relive in. this moment, bro. <laughs> this isn't what I want Whoa. to remember. Oh. Feels like every, you know, we, we're getting the MM game in, in this series, Harry. We got that truck plant in the first map. Now we're getting people failing the cat boost. Double orb for Astralis. They put it over the rifles. Does leave them lacking on two, but you can win a round like this for sure. Yeah, a lot of it is hinging on this fight, though. If this fight goes in favor of VP, they just win the round on the back of it. So Magis, really a lot of pressure on his shoulders. He doesn't know it yet, but in a moment's time, he's about to be made aware of what lurks back in these tunnels. Oh, Magis, there's the swing. Lots of bodies coming his way. And while he does take one to the grave with him, that is the extent of the B-hole. Now the rotation's coming in. One man already out into the site. Glaive up in the window. Only arm with this Deagle. Can't have a say on what's going on. He's Molotov'd out of position. 
Astralis, they might just have to save here. As mentioned, Magisk really had to get away with a couple of kills on that orb hold. Yeah, I mean, you can't get mad for, for one kill there, but yeah, the first shot has to hit if you want more than one. There are definitely rounds that, that can that can work. We saw twists from the other side of the tunnels pull an ace on a similar a similar round in this tournament. But yeah, without that first shot connecting, VP win the round, and there's no kit for the retake. So sometimes that hurts. But not VP. They're going to start building a bank. They're building T side rounds. And that's really not what Astralis wanted because they would love to have, you know, either win that round and get their money back on track or lose it, just take their quick ecos and then have gun rounds ASAP. Instead, they're stuck in this weird middle so uh, spot where, you know, you're saving SMGs now, you're building a bit of your know, residual cash, but you don't want to give Magis a, a gun here. You don't want to waste any more of your money. Yeah. And so VP have more chances to build into this half after rule. Oh, there's, Ooh, there's yeah, quite a bit of reinvestment. They are looking like they're going right. to throw a lot into this round and call attack pause in to, uh, to yeah. supplement the and investment. That's Astralis is saying, we want to win this round right now. We don't want to, you know, they realize the money is not in a good standing. Bubsy's given Magis a good deeg, and, and now they've bought to win. The Jisk has got a kit as well, something they didn't have for that retake. And so, yeah, this is a now a very important round for Astralis. And, and how they've been divvying up the orbs. Well, VP, a little faster on the mid control in this round. They are running up Cat, and they're here very, very quick. Zip, while well, he's gotten across, he might be in hot water, Ooh. and there he is, opened up onto. Magisk has got no choice but to fight. Now they run into Dupree's orb. But they're going to start to turn back, and this oh, is because dear. they deal with the players in middle, fast flanking catwalk. Astralis try to use momentum, and <laughs> Shane will snuff out the last light, the last gleam of hope in that round. The AWP gone. Virtus Pro tie this game up at three to three. I love the awareness, right? We haven't really seen like a, a go at a fast flank out of Astralis yet. They throw it in in that round there and VP, not only are they ready for it, but it ends up being the catalyst as to why they close that round out. Yeah, if they were forcing to do pre there, if they weren't given those picks, they may have just run into the slaughter. Oh, nice try anyway for Astralis with what was inevitably a broken buy. VP even things up, fast out long for Sanji. You know what's funny about that round is if Astralis went for the cat boost, they would have had that early info. They would have had that early control. But uh, we, well, we know how the cat boost has gone for them. Two players tried to take it late instead. Astralis, they've taken some mid control here. VP out long. Never means a commitment here. Never confirms it. But with no one else back in B, back in spawn, it certainly looks to be this long cross. The double smokes are in. VP are going to get into the site for free. It's what's in the site that might be expensive. Oh, look at Bobski waiting here. Oh, no, oh. firing off. Now they know about him. No more element of surprise. Yeah, this round, you know, any chance of finding damage really did hinge on Bobski's position, getting away with something. Because now you're forced into a retake with just pistols. You really are just looking to strip some guns away if you can. VP up in the lead at four to three. And already a kind of more commanding looking T side out of them, yeah. right? Back on overpass, there were times where things started to look a little bit scared out of VP. You know, their style is one, as we say, that's pretty slow, pretty methodical anyway. So it feels like it's kind of hard to know when they're in their heads. But even thinking back to like the, the closing segments of OT, right? They were very, very passive a lot of the time. They weren't taking some of the same risks that they were willing to take before. Well, here on Dust, new map, new setting, and VP are looking fired up. Yeah, I think that does make a big difference, right? If we think about how Astralis managed to 10-5 the CT side of Overpass, so many of those rounds, as they did for VP CT, come down to reads, right? Like good stacks, keeping your triple Bs until late in the round, despite getting A fights early. And, you know, on a map like Dust 2, yeah, you can make reads, but they're going to be far less impactful just because of the fact that not only can you rotate so quickly, but yeah, it, it's, never, it's never confirmed. Losing long doesn't mean it's A. And might just be VP toying with you. Losing cat doesn't mean they're committing. They can drop back into a mid to be. So you're not going to ever be rotating your anchors until you have that bomb. Oh, the Very timing. close timing. Jay might still get it, though. Flick won't connect. Look close. Dupree going to flash himself back in instead. There's no kit in this round for Astralis. So as we're talking about retakes, one cannot be uh, found in this round. 
They've really got to stop it before it gets to that to that point. Yeah. And what that means out of this behold is you you need like more than even trades, right? Yeah. And three on three will not do if that's what you leave your uh, your squad in at this B site. So that's going to put a bit more pressure I like the on pain. this uh, this double AWP hold at yeah. the B side of the map. On Cat as well, first contact is Glaive. Oh, Bubsky fell. I would love to see him stay there because with this AWP, it would easily be able to take first contact. They'll never be checking for Bubsky there. They might even drop back and Bubsky can re-aggress. Instead, he's gone down into middle. And that may not be a bad call indeed as VP could drop into one of these mid to bees. But here comes some lineups. Yeah, these are just the standard catwalk smokes to try and get you out. And Virtus Pro, man, this is just the A commitment. In they come. There's Glaive's AWP. Good for the first. And now fighting even further is Glaive. It gives Bobski a bit more room, a bit more of an element of surprise again. This one-two punch in the A bomb site staggers VP for a moment. Can they dust themselves off? Can they pick themselves up? Buster not able to get these entries. Kicker, while he has tapped out one, he's got to create a lot more room and with very little time to play with, the options, the opportunities, they're starting to elude Virtus Pro. That bomb plant gonna come in with seconds to spare. Left in a two versus four. The bomb is planted for short. So it's all set up for Jane to close the round out. Okay. However, he's bested by Glaive's AWP. He's had a pretty quiet game so far as Glaive, but in the right place at the right time with the big green gun, you'll see through a fourth round for the Danes. Yeah, lovely little shots. The no scope to close as well. And you've got to wonder if like Bubsky is making his own calls there or if he's being micromanaged, but his positioning is great in that round, right? He starts Cat in a double setup. I think Glaive tells him to drop when he has the angle with the orb. And then Bubsky, you know, sets up for a mid to be. VP are looking like they're going for it. And then right as they set back up for this Cat execute, Bubsky's already up on default there with the opening kill. So he's, he's all over the place, man. He's in... The, the, the right spots, the spots that Astralis need him. And so, you know, credit to him or credit to Glaive, uh, whoever's moving the pieces round on this chessboard. Four to four. And a must-win round for Astralis has kept their co economy above water. VPs is yet to be submerged either. James still got his AWPs. And we're getting a competitive game out of the gate, Harry. That's a little more reassuring. Last time around, it was a, a very slow start for VP, not just in their finding their opening round at 6-0 down, but even in the first half, it was 12-5. Yeah. VP came alive and drew us back to OT. One of the things that I, you know, that, that we're kind of noticing, and this is something that's been spoke about in uh, in these interviews as well with Astralis, is how they say, you know, like kind of anyone's orping right now yeah. based on feeling. Largely has Have been Glaive in like a primary orp role, but this round is a good example of that, right? Bubsky had a spawn. He's been tossed the orp in the oh, early stages of what? the round. So oh, blind. you kinder, They don't know about him. How's he gone away with a double kill? He runs right by Astralis. No one sees him. Your kinder, like a ghost, like an apparition, has just appeared from pit and has taken the round away. Now with long taken, this becomes a mind game. Yeah. It grinds to a halt. VP up in a four on three. They wait with pit control in the bank. And now they wait to see if Astralis throw any more their way. Smokes out. Glaive goes for a peek, but again, is it that ruse? It's only one smoke for VP. They're playing with their food. A re smoke. And Glaive back again to the angle. But do you really want to go wide? When he has taken these fights to Jane posted up, he's often been the bearer of bad news here for Astralis, and they can't afford to lose another man. Backing up and thinking maybe it's all too good to be true. It is not. Here come Virtus Pro. Yeah, there's only one smoke left on Jame. That's gone in now. But look, you can see there are tiny gaps on this, and there will be one on the other side as well. This gives the Orps a chance to fight on the Ooh. cross, and there is a kill coming in on the back of it. Will that matter? Will that be the straw that breaks the camel's back? Losing a man on the cross Astralis don't look committed to this. They don't look interested in attempting this round. A bomb plant's coming in. Astralis have backed the player off in towards B. That's Majisk. 
and it might just be the save in spite of a three on three. I think they're going for it. Magisk was just anchoring B because they hadn't just seen the in ball cross. Just in case. Just in case. You never know what VP are up to. So here now with the kid on Bubski, they're moving in. Bubski's on cat. Glaive's moved out from the spawn. There's no Molotov, but Enable will do a little bit of trickle damage if placed well. Onto Sanji it goes. Glaive trying to cross. Jame is here to stop him. Oh. And the jump shot won't connect, but the oh. info does. And Glaive hits the oh. shot in the air. Magisk helps out. And now it's up to Jame. The bomb's not for him. They're already sticking in the smoke and there's nothing Jane can do. Five rounds for Astralis. The retake with just a few seconds remaining is picked up and VP stalling that long take does not do them any favors. Glaive hits us with a vintage Kukli style as well. Oh man, the little jump up there. All right, all right, Glaive, we see you. That's the kill that kickstarts that entire retake, right? The guy at the back of the site is suddenly feeling a tremendous amount of pressure. James' attention is divided between watching CT and the cross, and it all falls apart on the back of that jump shot. Yeah, safe plan as well. Not what they wanted either. VP maybe upping the ante, upping the pace, and getting out long again quickly. It's going to be a man behind blue dead. Sanji denied as a kicker takes down Zip. It's at least kept things even. And okay, we're fine now for VP. We're not stressed because four on four, they leave long with no more casualties, and now they can reset. Crouching through spawn, making that rotation, and leaving Jame with the open CT to hold for info. Anyone wants to move out of their positions, Jame will be coming that across. Luckily, Astralis are committed right now. They're stuck in their ways, stuck in the mud, and waiting for VP to come to them. Yeah, because Jame has this bomb, he can't sit and T-spawn all round. He's having to get a bit more mobile, moving in through mid. And it's looking like this is destined to be an A play, right? With Buster relinquishing tunnels control and Cat being a focal point for VP here, you've still got this long doors player to come in late as well. Glaive has got to hold his own, right? Gets out of there early. And that decision might keep him alive for later in the round. Will this be a bit of a, uh, a situation where Glaive's decision to not fight when it was available lets him find impact in the post plant? Your Kinder already dropped. Domes Glaive on that that first peak, and now the attention of this long player split between two positions. Magisk will stay alive and keep the round afloat. A three on three. Look at your Kinder, so no. low, and yet no. still good for the kills. Four HP, and your Kinder has just saved the day for Virtus Pro. Never should have been this easy. I don't know how he's just gotten away with two waiting in the CT smoke. Yeah, the, the first kill with four health was a bit much, but then to follow up as well, ridiculous scenes from your kinder, and he's already hunting, he's already looking for this kill. Set up at the B tunnels, Magisk will not meet him there. And so he is going to be able to save the M4, but you won't save much dignity. You won't save much face with a round like that being won by VP. Astralis did everything they needed to keep that even, to actually set themselves up for a, a three on three retake. But not today. VP sneak another round past the keeper and we're up to 5 5 again. Even Stevens and Astralis on the back foot as, as far as the economy is concerned. Yeah, uh, you know, if you want to look at uh, uh, this story for your Kindar so far, it had been a pretty quiet start to the map. You know, he was he was down, what, 0 and 6 heading into the round before last. Then he gets that double kill entry out through long, if you remember. That was looking like it was going to set VP up for a round. Obviously, Astralis went on to pull that retake back, but this time he stops it in his tracks. And now he's trying to take it one step further by committing fast through B out into the open. Don't they haven't dare. dealt with the car Don't player yet. Dare. The USPs what? are doing it. Oh my word. Virtus Pro, they might have it stolen away on a full eco. Just the rifle on Majisk. And it's looking like it's done enough. <laughs> the USPs steal a round away. And oh, as I'm singing the praise of Virtus Pro, as I'm really trying to back the squad, that is how the round falls apart. Bobski's a little troll man. He bought an MP5 SD with no armor. He was just looking to make mincemeat of VP, and that's what they do. Served on the table for dinner. What? I don't know how they win that. That's just an absolute like, calamity. Like, just gets the opener, right? Yeah, and I'm like, sure, yeah, okay, the right. rifle gets one, Four but now, two th now they're going to B, right? They're USBs. only up against pistols and, a, and an unarmored MP5. It should be fine. No. It was not fine. It wasn't fine, Hugo. Oh, my word. Well, Sanji's taken a hit once again, and I presume dropped the AWP over to Jamie. He's left with Deagle and no armor. The things you do for your leader. 
six to five, uh, a, a round win that will move past. And hopefully that, VP can do the same. It's huge for Astralis in the in the grand scheme of yeah. this matchup, in the grand it, scheme of this first half, right? Now it's teed them up to try and at least win out the first half of play. If they win this round, they break the money of Virtus Pro and suddenly, you know, they're springboarding themselves into the lead. It's one of those rounds that you don't really think of. You, you, you brush it off, you wipe it away, you forget and you move on. But when it gets to round 30, and when you start hitting the OTs, you start hitting the late game, you're wondering, man, if we won that one round, if we just closed the USPs, this could have been ours before it was all said and done. Instead, here come VP, another commitment on the catwalk. These have been good to them. They've been getting into a lot of post plants. Glaive, he's seen how far they've gotten, and they're way ahead of the mark. Nice shot from Glaive, though. Catches your kinder going back with the rifle, and now it's a beautiful round for Astralis. A five on four, a bomb going down, and a retake coming in. Yeah, so often you kind have been the space creator. Well, in this round, they deal with him early and look at the freedom Astralis are now feeling. They're running amok in this site. James trying to hold on. Good for a double, but Sanji is so far oh, away. Him. It's not planted for him either. It's a catwalk plant. So Sanji can't do a damn thing. Astralis, they do get round number seven up on the board. As mentioned, breaking the money of VP. And so you're hoping, if you're an Astralis fan, that this 8-7 scoreline is like a bare minimum for them now in the first half of play. Yeah, don't get me wrong, that was lost for Sanji. I would love to see him face, though. He has a deagle with no armor. He literally do doesn't have anything to lose. It would have been really good to see him, you know, just getting a kill, grabbing a player on the site and running away. Would have done more damage to Astralis, but it's not the end of the world. This is the eco win that Astralis just picked up. Bubski going wild. Oh, he didn't buy it. He picked it up. My uh... goodness. I just saw it so early. Yeah, I mean, so I didn't, I didn't see him with it in the beginning. I saw him got the USP kill. That's why I was so confused, but I thought like, yeah, yeah, USP over MP5, I could see that. I don't know what, that was just a mess, <laughs> honestly. That oh, that whole mess, yeah, dude, I don't know. You when Astralis get brawly, it does get exciting, right? Like, you remember when Glaive stepped away, where they get away with absolute murder? Another hero gun, another hope for VP, but will your kinders be any better than last time around? He's at least got an outlaw. Luckily enough, though, it's a position that Astralis are not considering or not trying to contain. That's a big grenade from Zip, putting your kinder on his... 40 health and the one man with armor as well doesn't even really want to throw that over it's weird at this point and so that's actually you know the best long control astralis have had right they've often been the you know getting battered over there instead they get a lot of damage off and they concede it even with a flank from bubski vp they don't know it they're locked in a cage right now bubski's taking the safe route he's going the long way around he's checking spawn before he commits there's nothing wrong yeah. with that but it will delay him on a flank it's pretty huge though dupree's cleared out tunnel as well and so at this point they do kind of know it's an a play especially with utility coming in three players here to hold the fort and a flank available from bubski you're hoping the AKs can just deal with the Ooh. job, and it's looking good. There's the opener's former Jisk. Yakindar with this hero rifle has been whittled down throughout the course of the round, and one shot was all that was needed to deal that killing blow. Eight on the board for Astralis. That little partial investment with the hero AK brushed aside, never even breaking a sweat. So we've got the Danes roaring back to life as they approach the end of this first half. Yeah, there's, there needs to be, you know, a, a chat here for VP, a quick talk, because they've had these, these rebuys round after round after round, these ecos. They've not had guns, full guns, for quite some time now. So VP, this has to be a, a pickup for them. This has to be a round. We know they can pull back the 12 fives. We know it's not the end of the world here and now, but you want to make something happen on the T side of this map. And Jame at the forefront with the orb might be the guy to do it. Again, Sanji on the back foot, on the weaker weapon. And VP a late long take this time around. Zip there on his own. And only one orb for Astralis as well. Oh my goodness, Dupree so close in the door. Jame doesn't know how close to death he really is. But up Cat instead. VP given a bit of real estate before the smokes land. Whoa! Oh! 
big from James. One way to open. Yeah, crazy that he's so willing to take that engagement and he wins it over Glaive's AWP. Oh. Nice response from Dupree. And now info gained for Zip on the long side as well. Alone in this A-bomb site is Bobski, but he's not going down without a fight. Now crossing out of oh, there, no. trying to play retake, trying to stay alive. He will get across to Cat, but can he get over and out of this dangerous situation? They've thrown a smoke for him. They've let him stay over at Gandalf. Oh, this has gotten weird now. VP, they, they know he's there. They've got him trapped, but they can't do anything about it. They need this bomb plant as well. And with Molotovs raining in to slow it down, Virtus Pro have just got to wait. Yeah, only one player spotted. Dupree's going back, though. He's trying to full flank the long side, and they bought time, as said, right? The Molotovs have given Astralis a bit more room to wait for Dupree on the, the late lurk. Yakinda's considering it, but timing is everything. He looks back to the site, and he moves out of harm's way. Not for long. Dupree with a spray, converts the kill, and Buster's still here, trapped on the bomb site. Bubsky's about to find out, and there he goes. Nine rounds to five. Astralis with another perfect A retake. They have been full of them on this CT side, and if it feels like VP can't catch a break. We've not really seen many B attempts ever since that and or that eco win with Astralis. The mid to Bs have been gone. And no matter how you sugar it up, whether you go short or long, Astralis have always been retaking this A site. They've bought an auto sniper, but I don't know if that was intentional. <laughs> On the CT side. I saw him throw it away, so it's just in spawn. I wonder right. if they're going to come back to that at any point in this. Let's hope it doesn't come back to her. Yeah, Stars. hopefully not, right? Yakinna's gone for these drops into yeah. CT a lot, and so there is a world where he could recover it. It shouldn't be like a, a, a defining moment, but they, maybe it is. They don't know, luckily. It's not the case that you're spamming doors with T-side autos and then the CTs are looking for them. EPA, I'm not thinking about that. I'd love to see a mid to B here. It's what got them on the board early, some of these B rounds when Astralis weren't, you know, as flush with cash as they are now. But there's a double setup, at least here. Magisk and Dupree committed. I mean, hey, man, like, if you weren't nervous before as Virtus Pro, you are now, right? Like, you, you never want to doubt their tenacity. You never want to doubt their ability to come back. But you also got to factor in that, you know, land nerves are a thing. And at such a crucial juncture in this game, oh. out through mid oh, doors no. they go, an accidental jump for Bobski. And that's giving you Kindar a double opener. Okay. Dupree trying his best to save the day. The only guy left in the B site. Dupree, take us to safety. Oh no, instead he's sidelined by Sanji out through the doors. Dupree was the man to open this round up. And now from beyond the grave, he's got to watch as Glade even zip attempt to see it through to the very end yeah, last of the half here no questions about the retake a two on two and the util already a miss the flashes are good buster's blinded but no one capitalizes on it they're waiting for zip to come through the tunnels sanju with first contact it's not an easy shot glaive's gone all onto zip they can double face or not face at all and it's the vp way to make you wait and find six at the end of the half vp at least showing the second half about to begin astralis up in the lead at nine to six but as pro managing one more before before that first half ended. Is that enough to make a difference? Now moving in to this second half of play. Oh, that's one way to start it. Look at the kills, they're flying through. Everyone getting dropped. The only thing surviving for Astralis is the utility. So at least some semblance of a game plan can be kept in shape here. But Yakinda wants to bend it out of shape. He's already pushed through B, he's in the spawn. And the longer Astralis take to commit, the closer this flank will find itself. Back they go, regrouping. And here's where the spot comes in. Yakinda, oh dear, it should be a freebie. He's whiffed some shots at least. Gonna have to get out alive. But, oh, Buster will make up for it with a quick tap up top mid. Now an Imagisk. And yeah, I'm not thinking of this round like it's any longer winnable for Astralis. Just about saving face. Whatever they had to what? show us here. I got to it. What if, what if Alex and Chad had said that during the famous Cadian moment, right? What if, you know, you're meant to be picking this up, Hugo. You're meant to be getting me excited. Look, 1v5 for Majisk all the way through T-Spawn. I've already built this up now. Maybe it's the realist yeah. in me, Harry. Maybe, maybe, maybe it you're is right. the realist. Maybe you're right. And Let's I look see. like a fool. Let's find out. Majisk. Do you remember that one on five from Majisk? Oh, man, I, 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 I think I remember it. Let's see. Majisk, oh, <laughs> dead. Shot in the side of the head. Virtus Pro. Oh. Seven to their name. 
And as much as we try to will it into existence, it's not happening. It is an incredibly dominant pistol round out of VP. And in the longevity of this series and getting even more of a belter, I'm not too dismayed with that. No, nothing wrong. And, you know, sometimes uh, reality comes crumbling down upon you, but you just got to make do with it. You got to brush it off, pick yourself up and force by. Astralis coming in with Deagles as VP control the economy. Got the scout down middle, but the rest of Astralis, most of which are heading B wood bound. Bubski holding for Biagro, leaves him here later in the round. And if Astralis want, they can come back to him. He can throw a door smoke and they can recommit into this site. Certainly might be the play here in this one. You know that the numbers are going to be weaker on B than anywhere else. Jame pushed back off of Catwalk by the scout and Glaive. Can he finish it? Can he follow up? No. Jame did have cover. The nade almost ended his round, in fact. And now Astralis creep out mid, but the timing could elude them. Yeah, Buster has just moved in, dropping this smoke. They've already gone through it, but he's still good for that opening kill. And that's going to deter Astralis from committing to this mid to B play. At this point, man, everything you've tried has kind of been uprooted, right? You tried looking for that opener on Cat, you got forced away. You tried going mid to B. Well, now you've lost a player there as well. The rounds grinded to a bit of an awkward halt for the Danes, and they're holding on, hoping that Virtus Pro are going to overextend. They're going to give something up here. You know VP like we know VP. That ain't going to happen anytime soon. They're just hiding, waiting for Astralis to make a move. And now we finally get this real mid to B commitment out of Astralis. Oh. They're up through mid. Kicker runs through the Molotov. And blindsides the mid play, still cancelled out by Zip, but it's a nice clean round for Virtus Pro. The response was good. They pieced together what was going on there before it even came through for Astralis. They had everyone in position to shut down that mid to be. Yeah, it may have been a man down, but like the timings of that push were really, really good. Like Astralis knew what they were doing. It really is just thrown into disarray by Kicker coming through the smoke. If he doesn't do that, I think that goes a lot worse for VP probably. And those mid players can you know, catch VP while they're stopping the tunnels push. Instead, it's a perfect round. And VP are more than happy with that. James, James got, got a Nova. Nova. Yes. No okay. money to be made. $900 ahead. The bounty's out. And James wants his piece. Yeah. All right, James. All right. It's unorthodox. But let's see if he can get any kills with it. There is someone coming his way. Womp. There it is. The Nova ringing out with a kill. And now he's hungry for even more. Another $900 paycheck. Here it is. Jame, get your stimmy, baby. Come on. Here he is with the push. Oh, no, he's dead to Glaive. The Nova betrays him. Yeah, don't Glaive's get too close. It. That's all VP is saying now. Don't get too close. Keep your distance. He can't win. We'll take these fights. Oh, <laughs> oh Glaive, yeah. It was only a matter of time. So there's Virtus Pro oh. tying this game up after all. A nine to nine. And that one kill for Jay means he's flushed with money. He's going to bring the orp out right away. Yeah. No issues there. So, Harry, when we went into this game, we said, okay, Astralis, they're going into one of BP's most played maps. A map that Astralis in recent times haven't played too much. What have they got to show us? What have these T sides got in store? At 12 to five, they could only just close out their last map in OT. Right here and now, it's even Stevens. It's up for the taking for Virtus Pro. Astralis need a banging rifle round out of the gate. Yeah, you, you really want to hit the ground running here, right? You, you want to start to take matters kind of back into your own hands. You want to start to make VP feel like they're at the mercy of your T side. You don't want them any more confident than this. <gasps> the barrel, Hello. the barrel. Glaive, he's got the info. Oh, James, stop <laughs> it. Stop it, you saucy little minx. He's showing a little bit in middle, but nothing too much. Now backing out of there. Just a little teaser to Glaive. Oh, no. And Astralis, in doing this, they, they leave B. They're like, don't peek lower. James holding you. And that spot has now been taken by Buster. Glaive jumping out of the sight of your kinder down in middle. He does have that secondary up. He is tagged up. Now Astralis getting ready to go long. VP, it's as clear as day. There is no question about it. Five players in the long position. If anyone goes back, Buster is there to deny. But in the meantime, this double orb is inside of the site. Your kinder from B has been boosted in with Jame. What could possibly go wrong for VP now? 
Yeah, they are so ready for this play. Astralis, you are walking in to certain death. All players here for VP, even Buster moving in from lower tunnels. They know what's happening. They know what's coming their way. Astralis try to get past. The smokes are now fading as well. They try to spill into the site. Jane with his AWP on short, hasn't been given an angle yet. Molly. There is still this player tucked at Gandalf. The Molly is wasting precious win. time. They can't get this no bomb way. planted. They can't get the bomb planted. And Virtus Pro have won it on the time alone. It eludes Astralis VP up in the lead, and it's not often that the Danes run out of time. It's not often that rounds fall apart like that. And maybe that's a sign of the times, oh. as now VP springboard themselves into the lead. That's the AWPer's dream, man. Jame holds that Molotov all round. He's just scoped up lower. He doesn't need to use it, and it comes in with 10 seconds remaining. But just couldn't do anything. If he gets on the bomb plant there, he will die during the animation. His team suddenly go wild, right? They start hunting kills down. They get three out on zip of all people. And nothing else. VP are laughing all the way to the bank and this boost up cat again. The flash at least gets it off. Strauss doing their best to avoid a disaster for now. Yeah, once again, early set towards short and maybe looking to explode long into an A split R Astralis. This is... You know, not anything crazy complex from the day. Sometimes going back to basics is what's needed to find success. So they take this long control. They're pressuring the players in the site. Sanji not letting these guys out of cat has just given a lot of room over to Virtus Pro. Look at this now. It went from only two bodies in this site oh, to suddenly everyone's here and they're all chipping in. Jane with a late trade. The bomb out at long, okay. but it is just Jane oh. left. He's got it down to a 1v1 on both sides and now playing around this bomb with Glaive left to beat. It's a clash of orphans, no. a clash of legends and Jame is the man to put 11 on the board for VP. Oh, unreal from that AWP on the CT side. They were just about to clear him at car, and then that flash comes out. Sanji swings wide. It somehow favors Astralis. They win the trade game on long, considering Sanji opened up. But Jame had to be cleared, and Dupree couldn't do it. Too flashed out. If he does, that round's theirs. Instead, look at the result. Jame kills everyone. Audacious. He sat on top of the bomb in that 1v1 as well. He didn't hide. He didn't give it away. And VP are trying to steal this series back from the brink of defeat, from Astralis in control. Although, anything but free. Look at the speed. They've upped the pace. They've grabbed a gun, and they're committing into the A site. Oh, yeah, but on this cross, we've seen VP devastate the Astralis forces before. This time, with the smoke down, they are able to get oh, that bomb into the site. And with the bomb now planted, a chance in the five on four. The retake through CT starts to get awkward. Your Kinder opens up other okay. avenues up on the short side. You've got to deal with your Kinder because he's taking everybody out of the round one at a time. Three for him. And now Virtus Pro is spurred on. Up they come. Buster with the kill to Bobski. Zips to Eagle. While it's good for the first, that's the extent of it. And a huge round out of your Kinder puts VP up onto 12. <laughs> this game is still going, and VP are not letting go. They are not giving Astralis the room back into this T side, and I can't say I don't love it. Insane play from Yakinda. Just runs through the mid doors, and every wave of Astralis is unable to put a stop. And coming into this, I was worried about Dust2. I'm always concerned about Dust2 when it's your pick in a series. It can feel like such an uncertain map, especially when you're up against, as mentioned, the battle hardened VP here, right? <laughs> Back to basics, Harry. Maybe more of a B round here for Astralis. It's the one site they've not shown much love to on the T side. Jame again, just back to his usual tricks on Catwalk. He won't be there for long, right? That's standard. You're expecting that every oh. round for Astralis, but Buster yoinking a kill out of middle with only a pixel of position. It's going to steal Dupree's life. 12 to 9, a man up. Money on the line here for Astralis. It's all falling apart. I would love to know how that Pete looked to Dupree. I don't think he ever even knew he was open to the AWP in mid. I was watching Buster's POV and I barely even saw it. Oh, that's brutal. 
A man down and a huge player to lose early. Dupree knocked out. Astralis, where do the answers lie? Where can you find these openers? Short side, Ooh. maybe. Magisk versus Kicker. Oh, I don't think Magisk one. spotted him. Kicker yeah. knows. Kicker is more than aware that there was a guy here on Cat. And now he's been even more aware that he's hit this timing. Blindsiding Magisk, who was never ready for a close swing. Glaive was attempting a trade here. But already the short player's gone back. It feels like you're fighting against your own shadow, man. They're just disappearing and reappearing elsewhere. Oh, Glaive out through the short side does have Jane to beat. And this is a fight that Jane has been good in time and time again. The fact that Zip has knocked oh! him out has maybe given them what? a chance after all. Huge from Zipnix on this long flank. Astralis have still got fight in them yet. A three on two with the bomb down. And your Kindar and Buster, this was never a situation they even envisioned. And they're giving it up. Oh my goodness. What a round to sneak past the keeper. Where did that come from? Zip's long lug was perfectly timed, but in tandem with him getting a double there is Glaive even winning a fight on the AWP. And so despite Dupree dead in middle, despite the strong start for Virtus Pro, it all comes crumbling down. And Astralis hold on. That was the round that really, in my head, would have almost sealed the deal for VP, right? Astralis losing all their money, down 13 to 9. It would be reliant on one more rifle round. Now Astralis have given themselves a second life. Double digits. And all up in the air now. Everyone goes quiet. There's the shot that started it yeah, all. Just unreal, man. Really, like, all things considered, the fact that this was a three on five is, is remarkable that Astralis pick it up. And it is in no small part because of Zip's long yeah. flank, right? I think if Jame is still posted on that angle, Glaive is never even given a chance to take those fights in CT. You can definitely see Dupree, like, it's getting to him as well. He's the bottom performer in his team right now, second in the server. He he that he was him getting picked in middle without the info as well. He's been, you know, dying a lot first. It's not fun for Dupree right now. Just got to keep your head in the game. When you when you die like that, you go down 3v5, you know, he's sitting there probably thinking the round's over, and Astralis pull it back, they win it. So that's got to be motivation in and of itself. 12 to 10. Now it's VP's money drawn into question. They'd love to answer the call with a uh, with a win here. And maybe the cat boost, maybe it'll finally be time to show it. James has been doing it round after round, and he's been flashed off every time, but not today. Bubsky, no flash for him. His team out long, and he's dead first. This doesn't leave you with a lot to fall back on either if you're Astralis. Right now that you've lost this tunnel's control, it's given room to VP. Look at them. They've taken all this control away over towards the B site. And so they know this is destined to be an A play. Already. Oh my God, James just flashed. No one peeks on the back of it. Maybe just an info flash. No one fires oh. off, so they're not ready for these close peaks. Magisk with a double. Yakinda holding on to the site. Won't give them an inch. And with Jame still covering from Cat, Glaive is pincered in. A rough spot. He's got to flush out Yakinda. And they can't seem to deal with this pest in oh, the A bomb what? site. Zip with the flick. And still Yakinda being a nuisance. Oh, oh Zip, Zip with the turn. AW. P fighting back in and it's a 1v1 again jane versus glaive clash of the Thanks big it. brains clash of the titans and jane is calling glaive's bluff he knows he's trapped oh! and glaive will nail the shot no accounting for that if you're jane no accounting for that quick flick out of glaive Astralis get what? onto 11, and Zip has just had round of life when it matters most. That flick on the first long play, oh. I don't know how he does it. The contact long play what? is a beautiful call for Astralis because it makes magic happen. Hook. We've now seen five players on Astralis or in this series already, and we are not done, ladies and gentlemen. We are nowhere near done. 11 to 12, and a round snuck right through the legs of VP, nutmegged. Not happy about that one. And look at what it's done to them. They're on an eco, Hugo. Yeah. This is the path back to equalizing this game for Astralis. I'm just still shocked that Glaive, when he made that play, he dropped off, he ran CT, he walked back. Jame heard that. It was a fake. It was by design. Jame 
huge brain on the shoulders doesn't fall for it, but still Glaive hits the shot. What an in-game leader. And here we go. This is where it all starts to fall apart. This is where pretty for VP turns ugly very quickly. Astralis may have won a USP round. VP are not going to be as fortunate. Yeah, right. They're all just on the wrong side of the map. They took a heavy gamble towards A, and it's not paid off for them. The bomb's all the way back in T-spawn. That's not a problem for Astralis. If anything, it's quite nice. It's given them a bit of time to figure out what's going on in this round. And now as they set up into B, they've got a free bomb site, a free bomb plant. 12-12 is as good as done. My goodness, this game is providing, Harry. It was a bit quiet at the start of Dust 2. It was a bit back and forth, but now it's up in the air. No one in control of this one. But Astralis feeling the burn maybe that little bit more. They've got a map in their pocket. They've got some of the pressure alleviated. And Zip is having a field day on this anti-eco. Two kills already. The spam through the door will do some damage. And VP aren't getting out here with even a player. I'll buy a ticket. It's all too familiar territory. Five alive and Astralis, they deal with that eco. But it was all the means to an end for a VP. It was all the wait for this buy round. And it's unfortunate. The VP are not going to be having an AWP unless you kinder glass rifles. And of course he will. Yeah, man. What Jane wants, Jane gets. <laughs> I was about to say, like, yeah, Sanji doing it short. Yeah, Buster doing it short. You can just top in the in the team, second in the server, and he has no armor behind, yeah. behind his rifle now. Well, the so faith in Jame is there. It is a lot of faith, right? A lot of faith in Jame. And we need to see why that's the case, right? If there ever was a time for Jame to give us a round, it's in this one where they've sacrificed armor on your kinder oh, no. with a fast mid to B getting dealt by Astralis. One player in this B site is the armorless Yakinda. This is it. This is all your chickens coming home to roost. He needs to make a play and aim punched out of the round. Zip's going to get him a four on three and the B site stripped away from Virtus Pro. They're saving. They're not attempting this one. Astralis are back in the lead. Oh my goodness. And they know that better than most. They know that better than anyone right now. VP are not even considering this one. Safe plant even. Astralis, they make sure that nothing goes bad here. They keep their eyes on the prize just in case VP want to slip in last second, but that's not the case. And soon the penny drops. 13 to 12. And VP not in a pretty position right now, not right. in an enviable one either. It's unreal, right? Like we, we talk about Landers, we talk about Jit as well. In this head-to-head, -head, you look at the, the names on Astralis, you look at the legacy that these guys have, on LAN is where they do their best work. And I think no one is exemplifying that more in these last few rounds than Zipnix. He definitely deserves yeah. a lot of praise as to the reason that Astralis are even in this position. It was him with back-to-back -to -back 2Ks to put a stop to this run from as Pro, and now Astralis are in the lead. Now the scales have tipped yet again. Me final spot, if they can maybe take a victory at IM Cologne, that would be quite a statement and quite a lot of reinvigoration into a roster that we felt was on the decline. Well, now they're on the up and up. Lan is back, and so are the Danes. Got that orb swap, Magis taking it now, not Zip. And so VP sit back with two in B. Again, Astralis, they seem to th feel this is the solution, the, the way to get the rounds on the board. Kick it and Buster ready and waiting through the smoke and the entry's in, but Kick it flying in, provides a double. Can he get his util out in time? Just throwing what he can into the sky and climbing up above, he's dropped by Glaive. Now Astralis own the bomb site, but there is no way you save here if you're VP, you are giving it every go. Yeah, James mollied out. His orb can't really find anything yet, but they are boosting him oh, over I this get. smoke. Looking in this little pixel oh. gap, Yakindar's the eagle strips Magisk from the round. Glaive and Zip. This little duo, the two that took time away from Astralis, are now going to put the hours in when it matters most. Back against the wall, oh, no. a man down, going oh. back. The flash is good. Zipnix with the first and still eager for more. Glaive alongside him, Miss Spray. It's Zip to do it. 1v1 and Jane, the last man, elusive as ever, oh. up on top. Nails the no scope, but no there's time. no time for the defuse. Zip has done it. The clock is enough. All the kills for Virtus Pro, but none of the glory, none of the rounds. 14 on the board for Astralis.
and they're on their way to potentially 2-0-ing this series. Wow, yeah, G2 waiting in that semi-final right now and probably a little bit worried as well. We're getting a great game out of Astralis. These B rounds, these executes late have been incredible. And it's another win from Zipnix, yeah. man. There's no stopping him. All of these T-side rounds as of late coming off the back of this guy. Yeah, and James is a guy you rely on in the clutch, right? He's a, there's a reason we see him so late in every single round. He's a guy picking up these ones for VP. Now, that's twice now. That's in the 1v1v Glaive down an elevator that Glaive hits the headshot. And right there, James gets the kill, but it doesn't matter. He looks to open instead. Dropped off of the boost and a missed shot from James. It's uncharacteristic. The pressure may be getting to him. Astralis on the up and up and about to close. Glaive tagged you, Kindar crossing yeah. B, and he is the only player in this B site again. No armor last time, no health this time, and no breaks being caught by VP. They might feel the need to rotate players over. This puts Sanji in a dangerous spot. Could have Ooh. been the opener for Dupree, but instead he does see that fight through. Now you've got support for your Kindar in B, and Astralis know this as well. They're no longer looking to commit to this B site. The plan is back up in the air. Yeah, and if anything, it's a bit ruined. Where do you go? And when? A lot to clear and flashes give away exactly what you have in your mind. So Glaive tries to take dry fight. He jumps the corner. Buster's back on car with his AWP. He's not the only one. James and Goose. Got to get past double snipers and Glaive, not usually an AWPA. Is he up for the job? Oh, yes, yes he is. Nails the opener. As you say, more where that came from. Ooh. Up in the site. Now they know about Jave. Flashing him long. off the angle. The bomb is dropped on the long side. Time is the problem. And Jave, as we say, the time lord in this A bomb site is trying and denying the round to Astralis. Even though he's taking fights, it's unwinnable for the Danes. 13 for Virtus Pro, and maybe, just maybe, this game has still got some legs on it yet. <sighs> yeah, I mean, your guess is as good as mine at this point. VP, never a team to give up or go down without a fight. If you watched the overpass, you'll remember that. Astralis, do they feel the burn yet? They've got the money at least. That was the problem last time. Point. Glaive's back in with a rifle. He's not got armor. I hope he remembers. I hope he realizes. Glaive, doesn't look don't like do he this has. to me. Don't do this to me in round 28, Glaive. Come on. Uh oh. See, oh. it's hard to quantify the effect this has, but it does have an effect. Yeah, it, well, you know, we'll see, right? If the round ended up getting undone because of uh, aim punch, because of something wild going on, you'll know about it. Stack it up outside of B. Again, the call for Astralis. These B plays, they've created a lot of opportunities for the Danes. But will they look to follow through? Or is this just a little fake in the opening segments of the round? Bit of utility going in, keeping these B players on their toes. Cat control taken. So a bit of a standard default here from Astralis. The only thing they're lacking is long control. It's for that reason that I don't envision this goes back to A, right? I'm guessing that this is an A fake into the B split, and that is exactly what this is looking like right now. You've got utility on Buster and your Kindar. Two smokes to slow down this B play. Yeah, they're trying to force the nades out now. There's Buster climbing up and over with his smoke down. Kick has actually opened up. He's dropped the mid to B. He blocked the smoke. Glaive didn't have open season. And it's an absolute slaughter inside of the B site. Majis trying to save the day. He's grabbed a couple of kills. And the CTs aren't here yet. They're caught off by the smokes, by the molly, landing in the window. Astralis, this round looked as good as done. But now suddenly I'm believing all over yeah. again. Especially with guys Ooh. like Zip still alive. Oh, it's into a two on two. This was a two on five, by the way. Zip Mix trapped in a corner. Sanji is right behind him. And even though Magisk is trying to watch Whoa. for this, it's still the kill coming nice. in for Virtus Pro. Team Ace as everyone pulls their weight. A damn good try from Magisk and Zip. You couldn't have asked for more out of them, but it's not enough. VP. 14 to their name. Oh, and the money. It's so awkward for Astralis. They can put up another buy, but it's going to leave yeah. them wanting if it slips away. I mean, we didn't see Glaive fight in the middle. He died to kick it coming through CT, blocking the smoke. But if anything, him not buying armor gives him uh, an AK with nades this round. So, you know, swings and roundabouts, there are benefits. Uh, I guess that's lucky, but at the same time, 
you're not exactly feeling lucky to be in this position. 14-14, there's an opportunity. You've just got to make the most of it. Guns getting bought up. Astralis spreading the economy thinly. VP in control. Not feeling the burn anymore, huh? Last time, at least, Astralis had 15. They had that, you know, little safety net of overtime to fall back on. If they I mean, when you've got Zip almost 30 kills deep, you've got the rest of the gang all around him starting to uh, find their footing. It feels almost very soft, oh. that 10 kills could make all the difference in this game. Magisk with the opener and a huge one to find at that. Look at this, oh. fast up short. I don't know how Jame has been able to stay alive, but he survived the drop into CT. Look and look at your Kinder, fast up the short side. It's given over a kill. Glaive has just missed the timing onto Buster, but right now they're concerned with getting the bomb planted and that alone I'll get it down. Molly's a little late to do too much damage. Bubski's out of there, high Ooh. and dry, all good. Jame on the long side, deletes Majisk, and it's another one of these 2v2 retakes, this time in the A-bomb site. Bubski and Glaive, the two to try and keep Ooh. Astralis in this, and just Jame left to beat. He might be conceding. Jame might be running for the hills, giving 15 over to Astralis. He did what he could, but he, yeah, he worked it out. That was not winnable. That was not easy. Astralis, it got scary, right? That was a safe plant. They were limited in where they could go, but with James splitting up and that info being gained by Majisk, they're able to take a 2v1. And that puts him in the lead. That puts him on map point, series point, semi-final point here. Nine. 15 to 14. Nine. Certainly not done. Zonic wants to make it so, and VP don't have the money to consider a fall by here. They're just throwing whatever they can at the wall, <laughs> seeing what sticks, <laughs> hoping Jame can carry them through with the AWP. But in terms of Jame closing rounds in this map, he has had trouble. He's had huge impact. He's up top of the server right now, but it certainly doesn't matter when Astralis are winning every single 1v1. Yeah, the VP style, cold, calculating, merciless, and it needs to be all those things and more. Now more so than uh -oh. ever. <laughs> Gonna miss utility out here at long. And Zip is looking oh, worse no. for wear. He's mollied out into the open. Part his own doing. And down now. And over here in mid, Dupree, who's had a quiet game, has reclaimed the four on four. And in this B site, Buster is alone. He's taking control of the tunnels. He's grabbed an AK. And Buster steals oh. the round from Astralis. Just Bobski. Overtime is on the horizon. And all of it has come off the back of Buster's B hold. Bobski, what can you do? Can you rid us of this man in the tunnels who has stolen the game from your teammates? First kill found for Bobski. Now a chance at a 1v2. A big T spawn wrap. And Bobski oh. runs right into James. Yeah, Jamesus and his merry disciples trying to make this a very good Friday indeed. And well, Dupree over here for the Astralis T side is not wasting any time getting stuck in over at long. A big fight underway. Someone's got to take something and eventually kicker will. A man advantage for Virtus Pro to begin overtime. And now we need heroes to emerge. Instead, the problem is dug deeper for Astralis. With Zip falling over in middle, you are immediately relinquished to this tiny bit of map control at long and a three on five. Yeah, it's a perfect beginning for Virtus Pro. But can they keep it clean? Aggression in B, absolutely no fear for Yakindar. They've been doing this all half, though. This has been VP CT side through and through, just taking the tunnels and coming in on flanks or getting up the catwalk very quick to, uh, quick to retake. So this is no news to Astralis. If they double back, they'll see it. Clave. Oh, dear. He's going back, but he's not committing to spawn, and that's where Yakindar is, pistol out, running amok. Glaive is missing this timing, but if Yakinda keeps running, oh, he stops. And Glaive now does not have that info. This is a free kill for Yakinda. Ah! Oh, he takes it in the end. Looked a bit scary with the first few shots. And now Astralis know they're walking into a stack. They've got to fight their way through. Yeah, it's brutal, man. You just got to admit, like, yeah, there's going to be a lot of guys here. It's not likely, but we've got to do our best. And their best oh. is not good enough. The double orbs tear through Astralis. But as pro, take the first round in OT. And if that's a sign of things to come, maybe Inferno is on the horizon. That was brutal. The opener for Kicker, extended by Yakinda, who then went on a tear of his own, wrapping all the way through T-Spawn. 
It's a much more confident looking VP. And you know, your kind might have said in that interview, our style doesn't need us to be mega confident, right? It's all about a numbers game. But when he in particular is feeling that confidence, feeling the ability to take map control in a fashion that we just saw, that is when Virtus Pro look their most terrifying. Yeah, right. Your kind is one of the hottest rifling prospects right now in Counter Strike. The the you know, we want to see tested up against the best. And well, here is the proof inside of the pudding located as it should be yakinda pushed up deep in b he spots bubski and out he goes so he may be confident but he's not crazy keeping this in a five on five as astralis regroup back in the b tunnels we still have this double orb if things end on b if they can get through buster and his secondary then james going to be hard pressed to retake with his that's the hope though it might not be the world we live in because astralis have the bomb up cat they still have a long lurker options are open and rotates are closed we're starting to finally see people shuffle over they don't think it's b and they're right in that assumption Yeah, Astralis might have been the team to coin the meta where every piece of utility felt impactful and was doing damage. Furtis Pro, they've kind of coined the meta where every peak is impactful. Every, you know, they, they won't give you fights unless they have to, unless they want to, unless they're perfectly orchestrated with utility behind it. This round is a great example of that. Astralis have been looking for mid fights and were never given anything. Now they just have no choice but to go 5v5 into this A bomb site. Kicker waiting at ramp is mollied into the open. He is playing with fire. He's right behind oh. that smoke and Zip is gonna spam him out through it. A man advantage taken for Astralis. Can they do good on the back of this five on four? Yeah, you can just read the lurk. Bubsky's coming in, you can have just checked it, but Bubsky gets the kill. Now Sanji up close, he's got the kill, he's got a chance and he's got the first kill, but that bomb is open and not for him before the AWP. James oh is stripping God. them apart somehow, getting Majisk through the back of Gandalf. What a wall bang. Two on three, Bubsky's still here with another lug <gasps> to shut down the retake. They're not on the bomb yet, and they never will be. Bubsky backstabs, Glaives showing his AWP off. And despite James' heroic efforts, is Astralis finding an equalizer? Yeah, I, I Ooh, thought that when, when James gets that wall bang, bro, I don't know, I was getting worried. I was getting nervous. Really, Bubsky is the hero in that round there. Talk about like uh, get right here, man. Yeah, right. That's such a look at that wall bang. Look Sexy. at it. Match just never even faces. And now the auto snipers are out as we get into the last round of this T side. It's oh, brutal. look at that damage. Ouch. So you oh. don't know. Oh, they're going through the molly. Match just smokes it. He runs wild. Buster's on one health. He still holds on. A nade in the window would deal with Buster. It would remove this incumbent B player. Jame is here with his AWP, but they've already crossed behind the smokes. Jame isn't aware that a player's gotten out yet. And Bobski will deal with that AWP. Now, Buster's AWP at one point of health has got to do a lot. Flash could kill him. Crossing into the site are Astralis. Bomb plant comes in, zip with a kill. And the Molly's going to burn out Glaive, but it's still advantage to Astralis. Kicker and Buster, what can they even do here? Oh, oh the nade, it just it trickles in through the door. Buster's time has come. Kicker, one versus three. He can't find a thing. They're not giving him the fights. And Bobski's there to see that half through for Astralis. 17 to 16. They're up in the lead. And it's a big counter to that first in OT that Virtus Pro picked up. I love the call for Astralis. So many times you'll see teams spam those doors but not commit off the back of it. Well, well, if you think back to regulation, think back to those last few rounds, Astralis managed to grab out of VP on the T side. It were those B, it was those B plays rather, the mid to Bs, the fast tunnel rushes, but just just commits. And Buster spends the entire round hiding from utility that eventually kills him anyway. Also, Jamie, he had a kill on the cross, but he got blocked by his teammate. His line of sight was cut off, and he couldn't take a clean kill without you know injuring his friend in the process. That's painful. Feeling like you didn't get to have the impact that you wish you could maybe even should. Instead, it's Astralis up by a round into the second half. CT regulation was good for them. Near the end, it got a bit dicey. But we're in a new beginning here for Astralis. A new roster with new results. 
two rounds away from a semi-final here at Cologne. Yeah, and this isn't like a wounded VP, right? These guys are playing lights out. I think it would be even more credit to Astralis if they saw through two overtimes in this series. Oh, no. Open up a zip on Kicker playing with utility. Oh, the alarm bells are ringing now. Virtus Pro, you've lost a man early. You are now left in this four on five. You've got 45 seconds and it's all coming down to a last ditch attempt at a mid to B play. Is anyone watching though? Right now we've got players tucked in close tunnels. That's Magisk, but he needs cover from Bubsky to go to the window. Dupree flashes the smoke. He can just blind and the wallbang's there. Dupree gets the kill. Now Bubsky can help out. Dupree can slink off into the shadows and wait for the flanks to activate. So they will. Jame turns around and gets his head removed as Magisk refused to get checked. And Astralis keep it clean as can be. Five alive, 18 rounds. The future looks bright for Denmark. Yeah, oh man, this is, what a story, Astralis, they get back on land, and this is what they look like, a VP that don't want to go down, that don't want to give up, that yeah. are giving it everything they've got, and it might not be enough. They need two more rounds to take this to a double overtime. VP definitely needs some credit, right? They've held on in both of these games. Remember, overpass was 12-5 down before they pulled the comeback to OT. It hurts to lose in that fashion, to lose so close after a comeback so large. But the credit is there, where credit is due. And even more to Astralis to, as you say, weather that storm and come out ahead. Let's see if they can finish. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's the thing. Top teams, they come and go. The thing that separates these legends of the game from everyone else is this ability to, uh, to pull it all back, right? To make these kind of games happen. Right when everyone was ready to write Astralis off, they've managed to potentially take down Virtus Pro 2-0. Real legends, they're baptized in the fires of LAN, right? In the cathedral of Counter-Strike. This round, well, this could either be a whole new chapter in the tale or the beginning of the end for Virtus Pro. Cat control taken. Oh no. Everyone grouped up here. Astralis, they hear the noises on Cat. They know there's bodies here. They're rotating Bubski back in. Virtus Pro, ready to just deal one of these back to basics A plays. A Cat execute with utility pouring in. Kicker oh. cut down by Bubski in CT. A four on four as that bomb gets into the site. Glaive is still waiting for this long fight and it could decide oh. so much. Sanji wins it out. Is that the chance now for Virtus Pro to carry this round over the line? Flashing through, rushing them down. The media are fighting you in the spawn. The Kinder double faces in for two, and Majisk is left on the back seat, warming the bench, and maybe having to save. Your Kinder won't let it happen. That's a lights out headshot. And Sanji, massive round from him as well. Not only does he grab Zip as the Cat Exec comes in, getting a long kill, but he then just concedes. He goes all the way back to the doors. Glaive knows he has to hunt down that kill. If he doesn't hunt the kill, the kill's coming to him. Sanji's going to chase him. And I think at some point, Glaive thought that Sanji had rotated around Catwalk. He was so tucked. With Long getting lost, there's no way but CT back in, and Yakinda's keeping that on lock. VP holding on. Yeah, say what you will, but these guys are willing to do anything but let go. Virtus Pro, they want to save at every moment on LAN. Mm. They eyed up these playoffs as the opportunity to show the world that they can do it on the uh, local area network yeah. just as well as they can online. And in a time of CIS where Na'Vi and Gambit have taken all of the, you know, attention, all of the glory, VP have been grinding just as hard, putting in the work, putting in the hours and finding similar results. Well, this would be one that could even rival that of those top two teams, but they're not there yet. Yeah, out through mid, big opener for Kicker. And once more, it's Dupree on the receiving end of these opening kills. Astralis, they're gonna have to dig deep. A double overtime waiting in the wings unless someone here can find it all, can steal glory from under the nose of Virtus Pro. Smoke out short side. Glaive has seen that first player crossing, but the shot cannot connect. Glaive oh. being given a couple of chances. Things are heating up for him now. They're pouring in through the catwalk, and Glaive is really oh. feeling the pressure. There's one from this off. Can't make it a double. And with Zip spotted, he's getting wrapped. 
oh, from the no. low side. This is falling apart at the seams. Vertus Pro just two kills away from a double overtime affair here on Dust Two. Let's run it back, baby. I got nowhere else to be. Astralis, they're coming in off of Cat and they're coming in foaming at the mouth. But VP have locked the door. They've shut the gate. And they kept the smoke up. Astralis throwing in that execute utility just to retake, but there's more Molotovs where that came from and more kills for Yakinda to be claimed. Punches another ticket. Magisk now alone yet again in an unwinnable round. And VP, all they have to do is slip the noose round his neck. And there it is. 18 all. Double overtime. This game goes on. And the semi-finalist not decided yet. Yeah, it's all still hanging in the balance, man. Oh, oh VP. How are they this resilient? How is know. this just an average day in the office? Yeah, like this is nothing new. We've been seeing this all tournament all year for long for VP. And even before then. Rare to see, you know, a team on land stress Astralis out in a way they're doing right now. Dupree's still been fairly quiet ever since he got, uh, you know, taken down by Buster in mid. And here we go, we run it back. Money refreshed, round reset. And four out of six need to be found by one of these two teams. Or we just go again. And we swing in this never-ending, perpetual overtime cycle that is VP Astralis. Yeah, 22 rounds is the magic number we're looking for now. I know the HUD tells you that, what with it being all swanky and new. No. I'm used to having to, having to be the one to pass that knowledge on. Little Molotov gonna force your kinder away from short. The early utility damage, it's appreciated for Astralis. Softening up someone who's been so key at creating all this space for Virtus Pro. Maybe gonna try and tame the beast that is your Kindar a little bit here. Good luck. Easier said than done. And your Kindar looks to be at the forefront of yet another round. We've got that palm tea, uh, tree flash for Majisk again, so a safe flash. They won't see it coming. It just pops out of nowhere. Glaive trying to stop the cross. This is hard. This is where, you know, the AWPA really needs to be coming alive. And Yakinda wants to drop into spawn or cut off rotates. Forget dropping. Your team are already out in the mid to be. Bubsky doesn't know yet. His teammate's getting pressured and they're very close. Bubsky gets the spot and he even gets the drop. The bomb now loose and they find Dupri. Bubsky hunting, oh. but he couldn't see Jame up close. That's put VP back in favor. Yakinda is here to cut off rotations and ruin your day while he does it. And the bomb has been planted. Yeah, this is brutal. You got to get out. You got to deal with your kinder. You've got to flush out this one man in CT. They will deal with him, but it's taken a lot of time. Precious seconds eaten off of this clock for Astralis. Up through the double doors they go. They've got to be pacey. They've got to be speedy. There is a mid wrap coming in as well from Vertus Pro. The longer they take, the more damage Buster can do. He's stripped Glaive out of the round. And for Zip, he's stuck between a rock and a hard place. He's going to take the fight to the site. He's going to take the fight to Jane. <laughs> no does time. deal with him, but no time for the round. Oh. Virtus Pro, they take the first in double OT. Man, I love how Jane does that, right? You know, you could just expect him to go and fight. He's feeling it. He's having a great day today, but he just shrinks down like a little tortoise inside of his shell. The longer he lives there, the longer he stalls out zip, the, the less chance there is to win the round. So beautiful work from Jane just to live. And that last second backstab for Buster as well is there to help out. All the kills, but none of the glory here for Astralis. They've got to earn their rounds. Auto snipers are out, and in round two of the half, usually we wait till money is no longer a problem, but VP are planning for success. Sniper in middle. Oh, Glaive was double scoped topside. The timing almost eludes him. Yakinda could have taken that kill. Just didn't expect it to be so easy. And we're seeing things like that from Glaive, where it's like, okay, yes, you know, think, you know, timings like that that maybe someone who's not been orping for 10 years on this map doesn't know, doesn't catch him here. It's just something to consider. It's the clear, notable difference between you know, someone who can use the AWP and someone who does use the AWP. BP looking interested at B, but Glaive is here. Oh, and he's trying to get stuck in. That's actually just going to give the opener to Virtus Pro. It's rolled out the red carpet. Oh. Dupree a dead man because of that flash. Okay. And oh, it's all unraveling for Astralis now. This is VP in a nutshell, man. They get you exhausted. They get you tired. They get you making mistakes that you never often make. 
It's Astralis's urgency to try and get information, to try and take players out of the round that comes back to hurt them. Virtus Pro 20 to 18 and one away from a flawless T side in double OT. That would be great, right? That would be, uh, you know, a sigh of relief for VP. The T sides have been a, a little weaker in this game, in this map. So let's see if they can do it. Again, the orbs are here. No more auto snipers down mid for VP. They don't want to do it every round. And let Astralis start taking space. Sanji's taken long very quickly. The volley is in. And that's a nice start for Bubsky, providing cover to his teammate. Yakinda's dead. And Kicker will follow as well. Sanji, they know he's here. He's locked behind the box. And grenades are flying in. Nowhere is safe right now. And they're coming to you as well. There's another flash over the top. Sanji blind. And he still hits what? the kill. Oh, they just want to get him. He's a free kill as There's far the as they're concerned. Finally, they burn him out. Felt like that should have come first. Right? Especially considering you're just sat on it. But I guess, you know, wanting to try and just force the kill without wasting that bit of utility, it ended up costing them quite the player. With Zip removed, that is the shining star for Astralis out of the round. And Jame has now weakened this B site, plucking Majisk from the ranks of Astralis. Ooh. That's opened up a chance at a mid to be. And again, just VP classic. They, they know themselves that there's max one dude on B right now. The question is, like, where's that float player? Are they around CT? You know, where, where, where's that AWP ended up? And Glaive is starting to move in. VP going back to tunnel. They throw the mid to B. They wait. No info for Astralis. No kill comes. And for all Astralis are concerned, VP could be back in T-spawn by, by now. They could be regrouping for the long side. Glaive wants to get info. It's cleared middle. But it's not mid where the problem is uh, apparent. It's B, and the mollies are coming in. VP are making it clear as day. Dupree just needs a kill to hold on. Yeah, there is a flash on Buster, but it's not going out. Oh, Dupree oh instead dear. swept aside by the entry of Buster. Glaive has now got to do oh. it all, and he's been spotted. Does deal with Jame, and just Buster left to oh, find. Nice. Glaive takes it all away from Virtus Pro. A double on that AWP, and the retake is in. Spearheaded by the IGL Open phenomenon that Glaive's looking to turn into. Yeah, that would have been awful if they lost that round, right? That was a two on four for VP. That one would have really hurt Astralis. It would have been a clean T side as well. Instead, Astralis at least have something to fall back on. One round of buffer. And VP, this is the best half they've had yet. So they're probably foaming at the mouth, ready to close this series or this map rather. Take us to Inferno. And I, I can't imagine how good that one would be. Especially between these two rosters, two famed Inferno teams. We're not there yet. Astralis, if they win all three T rounds, it's a done deal. Yeah, the, the thing I just cannot let go of is, is no one exemplifies this saying, it's a marathon, not a sprint, more than VP, yeah. right? Like, if these guys were boxers, man, so many other teams would be just guys who get into the ring and try to put it to bed right away. Virtus Pro are all about making you tired, making you exhausted. And Astralis is surely feeling that burn now, especially when it's been them with the chances yeah. to close this game out, right? At every turn, VP have had answers. They want this third map more than anyone else. Can they get us there? Mid control taken for Astralis once more, but as pro not giving any of these early fights over. So while you've got control, you don't have much else. Bit over here towards Cap, but no real idea as to where VP are occupying on this map yet. Times are ticking. 40 seconds and Astralis start to walk out on the catwalk. That bomb's still back on Xbox. Don't be surprised if things double back and they get confusing for a second. Dupree has dropped in on the spawn. Now the pressure's on those two B-men. They've got to hold strong. Kick it trying to kill Dupree. Cannot find that headshot. It's Dupree to open up. And now the mid to be activated. Bubski, first a fall for Astralis. And there needs to be no more if they want to keep this game going. Yakind is denying the B-split. Buster there with the AWP up against Glaive. Misses his oh! shot and Glaive hunting him down. Buster gets two shots off before Glaive can. And even though Dupree's farming kills, they don't make a damn difference. VP, 21 rounds off of the time alone. It treats him so well. Oh, and we might get to Inferno after all, right? Either there is a third overtime waiting for us, waiting in the wings, 
or we get to go to Inferno. Have we you ever know, considered, Harry, that both yeah. of those could happen? They at the could same time? both happen, actually. Secret option C. Oh, my. Look, man, auto snipers purchased up, but they're not going to make the effort to tag anyone on the cross. Instead, going to move everyone over towards B early, with the exception of Glaive, who's running amok in middle. If they went B right away, this is the perfect time to yeah. strike. Glaive lining up this mid util. Going to go, oh, actually, wait, that's the door smoke, smoke thrown yeah. over by Glaive. Jame realizing just how alone he is, oh, no. and he can't make a stand. The B bomb site is overwhelmed. Astralis, a fast B play, might have just kept this dream alive after all. Yeah, again, I'm going back to it, but it's what worked in regulation. They just couldn't close this one. They couldn't get those last couple of rounds, and then we started seeing faster B rounds, that, that auto sniper spam, the mid to be quick calls. I love it from Astralis. They've just got to put a bow on it now and close the round. Glaive going in to take down Sanji in the tunnel. And at this point, VP, there's nothing to save. There's also no reason to go for it. So looking lost in the source, Yakinda's going to try and get some kills, pad his stats. But reality is sinking in right now. More util is landing. Glaive is hunting. And it's only Buster just trying to get away with something. VP won't make that mistake again. They won't leave a solo man on B in this round, but it draws the question. Do Astralis go back to what's working? Right. Or I mean, do they try and avoid the stack? This is the mind game that's in play heading into to what could be the final <laughs> round, right? Certainly. When a round matters this much, you're sure to potentially overthink it. Right now, both squads are, are trying to debate how to approach this round. Are we going to have Virtus Pro staying true to these four man A stacks early with a single AWP at B? It looks like it. They're going back to the tried and tested right. four man A hold in the beginning. Solo B, not deterred by the outcome of that last round. Yeah, this time, James back to his usual tricks, though. It's Kinder, Solo B, and James hunting for kills in middle. The nades are nice. If they landed Zip, it would have been a kill. Instead, it's Zip finding the opener. Wall or smoke spam to Buster's face. And one of the two B players, if you want to call them that, with Buster leaning middle, is now gone. Astralis know it. And look at them upping the ante, upping the pace, running in through the tunnel with no warning, no flash. Your Kinder's here alone. They're already up close towards the boxes. Dupree's firing off. Your Kinder's dropped the bomb, and he's managing to stall out Dupree's fight. No, no! way! Your Kinder takes three oh! kills and keeps this round going. He might keep the series going. And in time, Inferno, we go. Three.